Hello everyone, welcome to another Python tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to talk about a 3D uh, first-person shooter game, Space Invaders. So, this is going to be a um, first-person shooter game, uh, Space Invaders, using Python and the Yersna engine, and I hope you like it. So first of all, let's import the modules that we're going to be using. We're going to be using the Yersna module, so we can import that. And we also want to import the random module. So from random import uniform. And we can also import the first person controller from .prefabs.first person controller. Then we'll import first person controller. So the third module here uh, will enable us to control the movement of the first person in a 3D space at the same time give us the first person perspective. So we can set up our app with app is equal to Yersena and app.run and we can create our sky and we'll also set our player and this is equal to a first person controller and we can set the y position equal to 2 and set the origin y equal to negative 0.5. Now we can also create a ground so I'm going to create ground entity and this is equal to an entity. Uh, also the model equal to a plane. And also the scale equal to 100 on the x-axis, 1 on the y, and 100 on the z-axis. I can also set the color to lime. And the texture to a white cube. And I'll scale the texture. So texture scale and I set the scale to 100 on the x 100 on the y and I'll set the collider equal to a box so now if I save and run this I have my world right here I can use the WASD keys to move around um, and if I look around there's basically nothing here right now so I'm gonna add some things and to exit out of this window you just want to click shift Q and the window closes. So what I'm going to add now are two walls. So I'm going to create wall 1. And this is equal to an entity. I'll set the model equal to a cube. Uh, the collider, I want to add a box collider to this. And I'll set the position equal to negative 8, 0, 20. I'll set the scale equal to 0 0.5, 8, 30. I'll set the rotation equal to 0, 0, 0. I'll set the tex texture equal to a brick. I'll set the texture scale equal to 5 on the x, 5 on the y. I'll set the color equal to color RGB 255, 128, 0. So that was my first wall. I'm going to create another wall. And instead of writing all that out, I'm going to duplicate the first wall. So duplicate wall 1, but set the x position equal to negative 15. So now if I save and run this, I have two walls right here that are parallel to each other. So I can walk around and look at the wall. So now what I'm also going to do is create a weapon. And the weapon I'm going to create is just a gun. And this is where I'm going to be able to shoot, since this is a first-person shooter game. So I'll create a gun entity with a model equal to an obj file. So gun.obj. I'll set the parent equal to camera.ui. And set the scale equal to 0 0.8. 0.08. I'll set the color equal to color dot bold and set the position equal to 0.3, negative 0.2. And I'll set rotation to negative 5 on the x, negative 10, and negative 10. Now here we're using an OBJ file as the model for the gun. Now we're using a camera dot UI as the parent for the gun so that it's fixed in a 2D domain. So now if I run this, I have my weapon right there. You see the gold-colored gun. 
So now let's add in an input function so that we can actually fire the gun. So I'll define an input function at the top with a parameter of key. I'll check if key is equal to left mouse down. Um, and basically if I click the uh, left key, if I left click on the mouse, I want to play an audio sound, which is going to be a laser sound. So laser sound .wav. And I want to play an animation, which is a spark animation. So assets spark. I can also set the parent equal to camera.ui and set the FPS equal to 5. Set the scale to 0.1 and set the position equal to 0.19 and negative 0.03. And I don't want to loop it, so I'll set the loop equal to false. So now when I run this, if I left click, there was a audio sound and there was a spark right near my gun. Just like that. So now what we can do is create our two kinds of space invaders, which are going to be bats and monsters. And so I'm going to go down here. and create my bat, and this is an entity. I'll set the model equal to a circle. And I'll set the scale equal to 0 0.001, or just 0 0.01. I'm gonna create a monster, which is a duplicate of the bat. And I'm gonna have a bat's list that initially holds the single bat, and a monster's list that holds the initial monster. So now I'm going to create two functions to generate our bats and monsters. Um, and first, let's create two new global variables, run bat and run monster. So I'm going to create run bat, run monster. And they're initially going to be false. So these two variables will check whether or not uh, bats or monsters are going to be generated or not. So now in our input function, I'm going to declare input function. I'm going to declare global bats monsters run bat and run monster. And now let's create our two functions that are actually going to generate our bats and monsters. So we can create the function for our bats. Define new bat. So define new bat. I'm going to declare global bats and run bat. Now our new bat is equal to an animation of assets bat. Uh, we're going to set the collider equal to a box collider. So the position equal to negative 11 to 20. And set the scale equal to 1.3 in the x. 0.8 on the Y. So each bat entity is going to be this animation. Now we can add this new bat into our bats list. And we want to check if run bat, then we'll invoke the new bat function with a delay equal to a random number from 1 to 3. So this just means that the function will call itself after 1 to 3 seconds to generate new bats. Now we'll do the same thing uh, to create a function for our monsters. So I'm just going to copy and paste this for our monsters. Instead of new bat, this is going to be new monster. And I'm going to declare global monsters and run monster. Now I'm going to change this asset from bat to monster. And uh, I want to append to the monsters list. So monsters.append new. And if run monster, then I want to invoke new monster with a delay of a random number from 1 to 3. So next, we're going to call the functions to generate our bats and monsters. And the idea is that when 1 on our keyboard is pressed, bats are going to be generated. And when 2 is pressed, monsters are going to be generated. 
So now let's generate our bats in the input function. Uh, if we go to the input function, we want to check if not run bat and if key is equal to one, then we want to run set run bat equal to true, and we want to set run monster equal to false. We can invoke new bat with a delay of 0.1. So if I save and run this, and I press 1, now our bats are being created right here. But you notice that uh, even when 1 is pressed and the bats are being generated, they don't move. So in our so what we could do is create an update function which will basically move our bats. So above my input function, I'll define an update function with global bats monsters run bat and run monster. And I want to check if run bats. So if we want to run bat for every bat in the bats list, I will decrease the bats z position by 0.1 which will essentially move the bat forward. Now we also want to create a me mechanism so that when the bats are out of the screen, they're going to be destroyed. So that the bats list is not getting longer and longer, and this is going to free up some space. So we want to check if b.z is less than equal to negative 20. Then we want to remove it, move b from our bats list. And we can also destroy b. So if I run this, oh, let's see, run bat, run monster. This should be if run bat. So now if I click one, now you see that the bats are being created just like that. And they're still moving forward. Now we also want to make sure that when run bat is true, no monsters are going to be generated uh, or, uh, or are on the screen. So we're going to destroy any monsters, if there are any, on the screen. So in the update function, for mn monsters, uh, we want to remove it, remove m from monsters, and we want to destroy m from the scene. So now we can also generate monsters in the input function as well. So right below this, we want to check if not run monster, and if key is equal to 2, we'll say run monster equal to true, and we'll say run bat equal to false, and we can invoke new monster with a delay of 0.1. And now we also want to move our monsters inside the update function as well. So if if run monster for mn monsters m.z minus equal to 0.1 and we want to check if m.z is less than or equal to negative 20 monsters.remove m and we want to destroy m from the scene and also we want to go through our bats and we want to destroy all the bats as well when our monsters are spawning so bats.remove b and destroy b so if I save and run this, we can see that when 1 is pressed, then the bats are going to be generated and they're moving towards me. But if I switch to 2, oh, let's see. This should be an assets, instead of assets monsters, I have an asset called tentacle coding. So now if I save and run this, I go look at my monsters, I click 2, now I have my monsters showing up, 
If I click 1, all the monsters disappear, and now the bats are spawning. I can click 2 again, and all the bats disappear, and now the monsters spawn. So even when we run the code, you'll notice that even if I try to shoot at the monsters, uh, none of the monsters are dead, um, and so we're unable to actually kill them, even though we aimed at firing them. So now let's create uh, the ability to shoot our monsters. And to do this, we'll add it in our input function. And so we want to check if our mouse is down right here. So in this if statement, um, we want to go through our bats. So for b and bats, we want to check if b dot hovered. Then we'll set b dot z equal to negative 19. And for m and monsters, Uh, if m dot hovered, then m dot z is equal to negative 19. So now when we fire the gun, um, if any of the bats or monsters are hit, or if the uh, yeah if they're hit, they will essentially disappear. So I can go and run our bats. I can click and shoot the bat. Now it's gone. I shoot that bat. That bat. And I'll switch to monsters, I can shoot this monster, I can shoot this one, and this one, just like that. I'll switch to one again, I got that bat, and I got that one. So this is the end of this video, if you have any comments, please put them below in the comment section. If you have not subscribed to your channel, please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.